This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Oh. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, we crossed to my hometown of Kalgoorlie today They're to going talk through about some stuff. the fact that they could be up to, with that power for up to seven days. Yeah. It seemed to be turning back it's on It's coming now, back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there's um, been days. The uh, relationship expert, I use inverted commas there, uh, from Matt, John Aiken joined us. Speaking of relationships, we asked people if they have a relationship with a tree. <laughs> no, really. And Jason Berendorf from the Perth Scorchers dropped by as well ahead of their big elimination yeah. final. And there'll possibly be a little bit of whinging about the fact that Nova has started their renovations to mm. our studio. We would never complain about that. We are very no. positive, happy people. This is Perth's own Nathan, Nat and Sean. We Hello, hello. It's four past six. Nathan and Sean. Hello. Morning, everybody. Good morning, Thursday. everyone. It's so funny. Thursday. Nova right now is experiencing renovations, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just um, started. We're, we're, getting, yeah. Just yes, started. we're getting a facelift. We actually thought most of it was done, could be done during the time that we're on break. Yeah, but that would make was, sense, mate. You know, well, no, the, the doors were taken off the cupboard in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so, so they're now weeks. distributing all of the stuff and all of the people throughout Nova. Right now, it looks like a share house in London <laughs> in the offices. The amount of desks there are. Just being jammed oh, there's every also corner. just random crap. Just, we're, we're yeah, there's a, couple of, there's a couple of desks out, outside studio too, and it just looks really random. But I just noticed that the photocopier was outside yes, the audio booth that was there. there just, oh, okay. Because you just walk past things, Nathan. I didn't even see, see it. it. Yeah, and you just, what the hell is that doing I know. I, and, and we're only at the, the start. The... We haven't even got everything from that end of the building into this end of the building. We, this is going to look like a hoarder's house. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what it's going to look like. And they took a whole heap of stuff out. Yeah, I know. And still it looks. <laughs> and we're so at good. the beginning, and it's going to go from months. And we have to have, like, guests come in. Like, Millsy's coming in, yeah. right? Yeah. Today, 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 yeah. Today, yeah, that's yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan yeah. Ash is coming in as well. And we have to say, <laughs> it's mind the mess. Just yeah, come in yeah. over here, yeah, straight ahead. Just go over the tarp. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, what's that? That's a bunch of computers on a pallet. You're continually, continually uh, apologising. Like, when you, someone comes in, you're kind of like, oh, sorry about that. Sorry about know. that. Sorry about that. And that, you know how that, they say 12 weeks, please. Yeah. Will we be in by Christmas, oh, is what they no, say in our design. not in a million years. Mm. Uh, we could really actually use the $500 from What If to spend a, a day away from here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll get that's some storage today. solutions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're only a What If away from a New Year getaway with WhatIf.com. Oh, Aussies just know how to holiday. It's in our DNA. Book your accommodation, flights, car hire and more, all on the What If app. What If, it's Aussie for travel. One thing that caught a lot of people's uh, eyes yesterday was after the um, Novak Djokovic was too good for Alexi Popper and after his news yeah. conference, he, he let people in on a bit of... Uh, a friend. Like, yeah. Mm. yeah it's a friend. Fr there's a friend that he visits every year. A regular friend yeah, he, here, in, here yes. in Melbourne. Yeah. yeah, he pops down to the uh, Royal Botanic Gardens to visit this friend. This friend <laughs> is a tree. There's one particular tree that I've been uh, having special relationship with, so to say, in the last 15 years. I got connected with that tree. I just liked it, and I liked its roots and the trunk and branches. Don't talk about its yeah. roots. And don't say you're having a special relationship with oh a tree. God. That's a poor phrase. I know English is his second language, but that's not Have you seen that movie on Netflix right. yet, Saltburn? No, I haven't, but I'm familiar with Saul the, Byrne, yeah. this yeah, guy at the it. end. He's um, a, a, a person, a friend that he was sort of obsessed with, um, passes away, and he has a special relationship with his fresh grave. Mm. Oh, I think uh, I think Rex Hunt got caught once having a special relationship with in a... that park. It, maybe it's just that park. <laughs> no, I heard about Rex Hunt. It was with a blowfish. Or something. <laughs> 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 but okay, so all right. I suppose you can have a special relationship with a tree. Do you think? A tree. Do you think? Okay, is this a, a single celebrity tree. thing? Or do you reckon people out there right now uh, there's a tree in their life, and yes. they like will that you, tree more than any a, other? Will, yes. do, you, do you count? I mean, a tree, but do you count those plants that people? Because you know, my wife's obsessed with plants. Obsessed. Oh, like a like no, so a, I, fiddle, a, a special relationship with oh, a no, fiddly look, thing. But she's got many. I won't say just one. But, but I know, you know I know people have their favourite plants. Yeah, they yeah, do. Okay. Like some people act like their pets. But, but yeah. you're saying, but I'm saying like a tree. tree. I remember in the Gilmore visit. Girls, Natalie, yeah. in the Gilmore Girls, when the Rory first went to Yale, <laughs> she found a tree that was perfect um, for her to lean against. 
to yes. read a book. And then one day she went there and someone else was sitting in there and she was oh, asking yeah, now and I'm then trying. she got a nose put out of jail. As a dog owner, tree. I would say that if you have picked a special tree that you like to lean up against to read a book, you can guarantee that a dog has peed in that spot because mm. they, they love yeah. to do that. Yeah. Just right. so you know. Um, we want to know if book. this is only a Novak thing. If you are listening right now and you have a special relationship with a tree, right, give us a call. We may... Get several calls, Sean. Yeah, well, Novak's so on the line now. But uh, <laughs> yeah. have you got something to offer anybody? Yeah, we've got a, a couple of these to give away. $150 to spend at Autobar Mechanical. Don't lose your call this summer and save on aircon regas at Autobar Mechanical for just $169. Google Autobahn today. So the tree can be like a friend or it could be an enemy. Oh, yeah, that's oh. right. That's a relationship with a tree. It is, it is. Yes. Yeah. Talk to us about it's your relationship. Pine cones at you. <laughs> Just tell us about that tree that you truly love or hate. We don't care. I liked its roots and the trunk. <laughs> Hi, Mitch. Hey, good Hey, Hi, Mitch. Mitch. Okay. Right. Mitch, talk to us about a tree and the relationship you have with it. Oh, I've got a, a major issue with a certain tree out where we go camping. Beautiful. The hills. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, I've flipped it with the car on pretty much every part of the car at some stage over the past couple of years. It's a, a weird little S shape, almost got like a like a seat built into the side of it, so you never see quite see it. Yes. From the shape, and yeah, you just you know, you back the car, nudge the car, and you go, oh no, again. you've done it again. How many times have you had an experience like this with this tree? Oh, I've got to be got to be close to ten times now. You know what I love yeah. is that the tree's not moving. <laughs> it's like you go, it's got these feet that come out of nowhere. It's not swivel kicking you. <laughs> the tree's in the uh, same spot. Isn't there a point where you know that the tree's coming up or, yeah. you know, after you get, 10 times? Do you get smarter? It's where we camp. It's, it's where we camp. It's not even like on the track. Uh, from the tree's the point of view, you keep trying to run it down with your car. How do you think yeah. it feels, yeah. Mitch? Yeah. Yeah, well, the worst part is, is, you know, a couple of times it's been on the beers, but the majority of the time it's highly sober. Highly <laughs> <Yeah>, sober. There's <laughs> that tree every day going, look at this idiot, I'm going to get him again. <laughs> like, he's hit me so many times and he acts like I'm jumping in front of him. <laughs> oh, oh, too good. So Thanks, funny. Mitch. All right, Ali's in Rockingham. Hi, Ali. Hi. Hi. Um, good morning, team. My, um, this relationship was a hate relationship. It was my husband's grandfather many years ago. Yep. Um, his wife, for about 30 years, had planted a tree and he hated it. <laughs> so as soon as she passed away, he decided he was going to chop it down <laughs> yes. so that he could um, flatten his lawn and have a nice and smooth bowling green lawn. Yeah. Yeah. So he decided to chop it down this day. And as he was chopping the tree, he missed the tree and it went, the axe went through his leg. Oh! oh the tree fall back. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That's a magical tree. So he, Wow. He hated that tree. <laughs> yes, I thought yeah. that. I thought we were going to get calls of love for trees. Yes, but no. No, but no. Trees seem to be absolute pricks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he hated that tree. I got oh, those wow. trees in the that rip up car parks all the time. Yes, yeah, and stuff like yeah. That. Those business. Sean yes, loved friend. Ali's story. Loved Mitch's, Mitch's story. story. What let's, are we going to do about it? Give them both something. I okay. tell you what, though. Yes, they're yes. both in the running know, to see Taylor Swift in Tokyo. <laughs> so that's something. All right. What about a hundred? $150 to spend at Autobahn Mechanical. Don't lose your cool this summer and save on aircon regas at Autobahn Mechanical for just $169. Google Autobahn today. That's going to both of you guys. Yay! Mitch and Ellie. We don't have to choose. No Beautiful. worries, Ellie. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, Thanks Ali. Nathan, Nat and Sean. Podcast. Guess what, everybody? Murder at First Sight yes. is coming back. I know. All right. It's back, um, everyone. Uh, Monday, January 29. Not long to wait. 7.30 on Channel 9, of course. But the relationship expert that we know and love is none other than John Aiken, who's right here in Studio 2 with us. Good morning, team. Now, now John, I don't, that know, time again. I don't yes, know if I can is. trust anything he's saying today because you're wearing black pants and a black T-shirt. Mm. Well, I like to be mysterious mm. early in the morning. Or yes. a puppeteer. Yes. It could go well, either way. Well, I can way. do both. I'm versatile. <laughs> well, yeah. You're kind of a puppeteer, really, aren't you? Well, I, I certainly have to wrangle a lot of personalities yeah. uh, on the show, and yeah, this year and is no exception. Them. What's that? Mess with them? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, I think I get very, very direct this year with some 
you know, pretty lowbrow behaviour that happens. And oh, we, finally, we, starting fin- to pull yeah, them into okay. line, eh? Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, can I say <laughs> something that, different? That, that, that is that is refreshing for. Um, uh, you started doing it sort of last year, yeah. yeah. Because well, the frustrating thing for um, viewers is we see this upor- uh, just terrible behaviour. Yeah. yeah, toxic. And then yeah. you guys would never, never really address it. Mm. Now you're addressing it. It feels like you're, there's a bit of justice. Yeah. As a viewer, and, and, and which and that is, is what was sorely needed. Yeah, and, and I think that has become a, a very key part of my. My role is yeah. to hold a mirror up and say uh, that behaviour is not good enough. Do better. Uh, for some of them, they've never really been spoken to mm. in that way before. And some of them can't do better. <laughs> That's a, lot a, point now. a lot of them. A lot of them. Yeah, because uh, you've got to be willing to grow and really yeah. willing to accept yeah. what you're being told. That, and um, I feel like, and I'm not going to, you know, uh, sweep everyone with the same brush here, but. Mm. Um, arrogance is a common trait for a lot of these people going into maths. Is but, that, but is that how fair? Many of them? You know them. Is that fair? Well, I think a lot of, almost the, all of them... The men especially, sorry. ...are, are, are bad at relationships <laughs> and they don't know why. Yeah, yeah. right. And so uh, what they're doing is just repeating these mm. toxic patterns all the mm. time. So you've got to really shine a light on it and hit them you know, between the eyes in a very short, sharp way so it jolts them. Mm. And uh, sometimes it works, yep. but a lot of time they just look at me as the old mm. guy on the couch. Mm. John, I agree with exactly what you're saying there, and that's going to come across clearly in the show. But these people don't care because they're just trying they to, to, you know, get their only fans up mm. and running, mate, so they can show, well, that's, you know, earn that, some money. There's no doubt that there's a lot at stake now for them because after the show mm. they yeah. go into OnlyFans or they do <laughs> yeah. influencing they or they yeah. get, get their own podcasts yeah. Yeah. or mm. try and get into radio. You know, so there's a lot of stuff that that they are thinking about as well. Well as trying to find love, but it's so not as well care. as trying to find, find love. No, trying that's to find the love. thing, Josh. They are not trying <laughs> yes. to find love. They're it's trying to become range. famous. And, and you know what's yeah. a bonus? If they meet someone that they can get together and be yeah. the celebrity couple from Maths, then uh, some of them do generally fall in love. I do. Well, there, I there do. Is and this year yeah. there is definitely love. Let's say, let's yeah. say, let's say that's ten percent of yes. the entire cast that's ever been on. Maybe even five percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like yeah. The rest oh, yeah. are just in yeah, there right. to be able to, yeah. like you know, like keep going. I mean, because the and last few relationships, that. there's not that many of them. That, no, I think we yeah. had about five that are still yeah. together over yeah. over the eleven yeah. seasons. Yeah, yeah. Um, but How many? Eleven. Yeah, I know. I, I, I auditioned for this show in 2014. Wow. So I, got a, I got an email that came in saying, do you want to audition for this crazy show where we match strangers? And I thought, well, you know, it's it's not going to go very yeah. far because it was mm. a very unusual concept. And then it exploded. Yeah, good call. I tell you, <laughs> what, you always talk about it being an experiment, right? These, yeah. that, that's yes. a word used before. And I always wondered about... Um, uh, try not to have a go out of here, but, but your, your own personal credibility because that's a field that you worked in. And then we watch you on this show putting yeah. together, well, so called putting together. I know that's not a new, but putting together these people, you're like, oh, come on. Uh, who would go for you to yeah, you're for not, advice? You're not, put together, <laughs> you're not put together for love, you're put together for yeah, television yeah, drama. so early in the morning. I know. Hey, bam, you know bam, bam, bam. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure you'd be, uh, I'm sure those questions come at you at. Oh, sake? yeah, yeah. And, and look, over the years, you, you really just have to, like you guys, you've got to have a thick skin. Yeah. Because yeah. you're in the public eye and people are, yeah. uh, you know, firing back at you all the time. And even the participants, one of the things about our show is that they come at me, you know, and, and it's quite compelling to watch people, you know, uh, trying to, you know, have a go at you. Uh, and I, <laughs> look, I mean, I know all the uh, background around relationships. I've worked in that field for nearly 30 years. Yeah. Um, so when I'm on the show, um, I just do what I do. I don't yeah. really think about it. And you're no longer practising. No, no, no. Yeah, so you're not taking private but, but clients, so yeah. that's not time, impacted. I'm, yeah. no, but I'm upskilling. I'm always yeah. going to workshops yeah. and conferences and things like that yeah. uh, to stay across yeah. everything that's going on. Um, do people find me credible? Some do and some don't. <laughs> Yep. And I just, in life, I, that's anyone, yeah, yeah, with anyone, yeah. really. So um, this year there is a broader demographic of couples, I've noticed. Was that a conscious thing to sort of get more than just your yeah, 28-year-olds? Yeah, so we've got our oldest ever participant, a uh, 62-year-old guy in the mix that we've never had Did, you hook, did you hook him up with a 25-year-old or what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know me well. Uh, that would have been anyway, awesome. <laughs> they'll get the least air time because yeah, they're right, not young and attractive. Right. I mean, <laughs> there, could you imagine the 25-year-olds, uh, uh, you know, uh, walking, walking down, down the, the aisle, aisle and... The sixty-year-old yeah. turns around yeah. like it's yeah. Yeah. it's a great idea. <laughs> anyway, note that down. Maybe a different show. <laughs> uh, but that, uh, uh, he he definitely and, and there's a couple of other older couples in there. They definitely bring a, a mix that we haven't seen before because they go at the younger guys. Yes. 
Um, we have a same-sex couple in the mix as well. Yeah. Um, and I think also uh, this year there's just this... Uh, that There's a couple of key players that constantly clash and dirty laundry gets aired all the time and there's this, there's this issue of what's appropriate, what's inappropriate mm. and boundary crossing and that runs right the way through the series. Mm. Uh, did you have fun last night? Oh, great fun. There was a big dinner. It was a launch. Yeah. 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 We watched the first episode. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's great for me because I'm watching people while yeah. I'm watching. Oh, of yeah. course. Yeah. 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 I mean, is yeah. that awkward when they're watching you on TV, like in front of you? Well, I, I, it, the, the screen was big and I can't say I looked great. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I'm still not used to it when when it's that big. Yeah. yeah. You see big food there. and stuff. So yeah. Did, did you notice an incident uh, last night involving on, yourself? Uh, and boundaries. We'd like to mean, invite to the, our show our boss. This is our boss, Dave, Dave McClung. Do you remember David oh, yeah. from last night? He was sitting next to you, was that well, right? We, we, we were talking about things we shouldn't be talking about. No, well, no we're not going to talk about that right now. Oh. No, it's not about <laughs> what we're talking about. It's not what we're talking about. It's, it's whether one, one um, uh, relationship expert has become too big for his breakfast. <laughs> Dave, oh. why don't you tell everybody what happened? John was so nice, but you ate my bread. <laughs> 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 Tell me more. What do you mean, ate your bread, I Dave? I don't Dave. want to say anything. So, <laughs> you know what so, I did too. But that's what I'm talking about. Boundary crossing. Yes. That's right. You know, someone yes. actually, someone actually <laughs> heard the rumor. Someone actually heard the rumor that you ate Dave's bread, and they walked over from the other side of the table to bring Dave their bread. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, look, it's a bad look, but I thought he could cope with it. <laughs> Yeah. You're teaching him a lesson well, in resilience. I mean, let's be honest, he's fragile. Yeah. fragile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No taken, John. No taken. I'm just saying. Uh, you know. Well, John is at the top of his game. Yeah, Everyone should that's be offering right. him their bread. Yeah, Dave, come on. Mm. It was, i tell you what, though, it was a great night. And mm. uh, Yeah, well, you were fully carved up. Oh, no, no, no. Dave, 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 it's like it was calling to me the whole night. This piece of bread. Yeah, I don't know whether I'm going for it. Yeah, he should have eaten it earlier, shouldn't he? That's, <laughs> That's on him. Right. That's right. on him. Well, I have to say, the influence John. that maths have, uh, mm. not only in society, on social media, but the influence it has on other shows. Mm. Like, for example, Big Brother just recently yeah. tried to turn Big yes. Brother into maths and it failed dismally. Yeah. Um, but mm. the, the influence this show has on all other reality shows is insane and slightly yeah, infuriating, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. everyone's trying to copy something. It's and also the yeah. fact that it's so successful overseas and that's what overseas people think all Australians are I like. I know, I know. <laughs> it is bizarre and I, and I think many people have tried to pick it apart yes. to figure out what is the secret sauce and I don't think anyone... It's booze. Is the yeah, answer? Well, <laughs> that, that, that's a part of it. Um, yeah. You know, but but I think no one really knows the exact reason why it's become so yeah. popular oh, around the a, world. Because it's a car, yeah. car crash. crash. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I like to think it's the love. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. okay. All right, John's delusional, everybody. Um, <laughs> Married at First Sight is back Monday, January 29, 7.30 on Channel 9. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Oh, thanks, John. Fantastic. It's always what a pleasure to, to the see morning. you. Brilliant. Loved it, guys. <laughs> this is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. We're just letting you know that um, yeah. we're working under extreme circumstances. That's disgusting. Normally but... we work out of Studio One. Now we're working out of Studio Two for the foreseeable future because Studio One is undergoing a massive, yeah. like, gutting renovation. If you jump on the Nathan, Nat and Sean Instagram page, you can check it out and see mm. it. Uh, we're not coping. I was just speaking to Mel, who's in charge of the mm. whole... The engineering, the yeah. Project. yeah. The yeah. whole project and... Um, uh, Sounds like it's going to be a bit of a journey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't wait for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> what every day we're finding Why just we all these in, weird then? things to complain yes. about. Why are we coming in? Why, no, are we why, why don't we play a mixtape? Well, to hmm. be honest, we really could have. You know when um, a Celine Dion does a residency at Vegas? Mm. Yeah. We could have chosen somewhere in Perth to do a Nathan Nat and Sean residency mm. and gone there for a couple of months. Great idea. What about Metro's Frio? If there is any business out there, <laughs> if, if there's the any, if there is any business out there would like that would like this show to do a residency, yeah, for a couple of months, yeah, they should get in a contact with months. us. That's a good idea. Well, it's no. going to be a couple of months. It's weird. The, the phones are weirdly no, 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 silent. Malcolm's, no. Malcolm's, Malcolm's saying yes. Hey, Malcolm Malcolm said it's saying really, yes. really look, easy to do Malcolm that. Malcolm is yes, and we've got and no other what technical else? stuff to do. Cheap, so cheap. <laughs> it's the Nathan, Nat, and Sean podcast. Hey, hi, it's Taylor. To see Taylor's era's tour before she hits Australia. A once in a lifetime concert experience. Tokyo, Lizzie, Taylor Swift, live in Tokyo. All right, going to put some people in the running to go and see Tay Tay in Tokyo. Could be Helen from Mount Claremont. Good morning, Hel. 
Morning, how are you? Cool, Helen. Helen. So, Helen, um, of course, the thing you want to win is Taylor in Tokyo. Mm, yeah. But I'm wondering if you're a lucky person. We know that no one won the lotto last night, no. which was $100 million, so it's going to jackpot to 150 Have you ever won money in lotto? And if so, what's the biggest amount? Never. Oh, like $13.65. Yeah, yeah. 55 very specific. <laughs> <laughs> she remembers that day. <laughs> and she well, shouted lunch. the cost of the ticket. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And sometimes mm. if you get the cost of the ticket back, you feel like yeah. you're a winner. But isn't that sad? My biggest is 170 which was that's last year. Yeah, I'm, I'm nowhere near it. Yeah. Nowhere near it. I've got to check my ticket. Have any of you guys checked your... I haven't checked no, my ticket. No, no, no. There's there one is a division hundred... two, 132,000. Yeah. I have sold my WA. last night either. You um, haven't checked it either. So all of us could be winners now. We could have won either 132,000 or there's even, even 33 locals won 14,000. Mm. I'll be devastated yeah. with 14. Yeah, uh, $13.55. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, good luck with both, Helen. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. Let's really see how lucky Hayley from Lansdale is. Hi, Hay. Hi, guys. How are you going? Good. Hayley. Any lucky wins, Hayley, before? Uh, I won 60 bucks last night. Oh! Hey. Hey. Congratulations. <laughs> What's that going to go on? You get a new house? What? I'm going to reinvest it for the 150. Reinvest, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's a solid um, investment strategy. That is, yeah. Very Sometimes good. $60, though, you know what? That's I think that when good. you reinvest it, chuck a power pick into the mix. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah get definitely. the Powerball number, yeah. no. Yeah. I always Guaranteed. get money back off a power pick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, good investment. Point otherwise. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, Haley, you're Hi. in the running to go to Tokyo to see Tay Tay. Let's go to Laz in Beaconsfield. Hello. G'day, guys. How are you? Good, Laz. Maybe, maybe, maybe the, maybe the men are luckier mm. on our show. We'll see, <laughs> Laz. No, no, twelve bucks. I only made twelve bucks. This was the twelve bucks. Twelve bucks. <laughs> <laughs> did they low ball you? Don't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they do. Hey, Laz, did you did you reinvest it like all of us do, or did you go and buy like a like a swing by Red Rooster or something? <laughs> No, no, it's going straight into reinvestment. I'm going to have to up, up, it, up a little bit to see if I can win the 150. Yeah, hey, Laz, I've got to ask you a question. Everybody, probably when they go to Lotto, they have the particular amount of money they'll spend, was it $22.50, you know, $35 mm. for the next one. How many games do you go for? Uh, I, I only spend 20 bucks and that's it. Yeah, right. Okay. Know your limits. Yeah. So, what, what do you do? What so do you do? Okay, I go. I'm, I'll usually spend. It's around. It's around the thirty or thirty-five dollar mark. Um, I don't know why those extra games? games to me mm. think they're going to win, but in my mind, I need those extra ones. I, I'll be honest. I I did up it for last did night because I thought. I went to the very top. No, I just <laughs> bought more than I normally would. I bought two power picks instead of one, and, oh. and a slick pick as well. So yeah, I know money bags. Mm. All right. Good luck, Laz. <laughs> Let's go to Jackie from Thornley. Hi, Jack. Oh, hello. Hi, hey, Jack. Jack. Okay. Right. You're going to be in the running for Taylor Swift, which yeah. is great news. We know that. You've gotten on oh, air. Well done. Awesome. Thank you. I yeah. know. What's your biggest Five. lotto win, though? Uh, I think it's about 800. Oh! oh! Are you calling from a Bentley? Oh. <laughs> Bought a house in no, Dalkeith after that. From, oh. I'm calling from a Hyundai. <laughs> <laughs> it's an XL, though. <laughs> um, okay, so what did you do with the money? How mm. exciting. Um, I think we just went out for dinner, um, just, yeah, spent it. We didn't really... Yeah, just yeah. enjoy well, ourselves. No, just, so, you, yeah. you, you cheated yourself. Well, Sean's got an important dinner question, of course. Mm. Yeah. What, what, what did... I was going to say, what did you spend it on? What did you eat? You go the beef or the fish or <laughs> soup? I think it was a buffet. Oh, oh, get your money's worth, I suppose. You know what's the most yeah, magical thing to see, Jackie, and it's not when he's training, but to see a non-training Sean McManus at a buffet. Oh, it's a sight it's, to behold. It was, it was one of the first experiences that I yeah. had with him. We're, we're at, at the, the races. Hands. We're yeah. at the races. Yeah. And, um, and, and firstly, I was confused as because no one at the buffet had brought back a bowl of soup. <laughs> That's when I first oh, discovered like, his why love you of wasted soup. wasted on soup? And then I saw one of the most magical things I've ever seen. And yeah. It's like watching a plague of locusts go through <laughs> they just eat everything, you yeah. know, like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 One-man plague. Well, um, yeah. good luck with the lot of next week and also good luck with Taylor and Tokyo. Thank you so much, everyone. No worries, All right, it's a beautiful Bye, thing. Uh, keep it on Nova or you can download the Nova player and register your details. Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We're happy because we're it's cool and we've got power. Yes, that's good news. It's always Ooh. exciting when your hometown makes the news, um, <laughs> but this time it's not because I went. Oh my god! I thank God I am not there at the moment. Calgary Boulder reported to be possibly with, be without power for seven mm. days. Also, 
Water is a problem too because something happened to the pipeline. Fuel mm. is a big fuel, issue. There yes. is no fuel. People are having to drive 40 minutes to Cambelda to get fuel. And then queue, 40 minutes drive, but yes. then queue for hours. hours. Queue yeah. for hours. We thought, well, we'll find out exactly what's happening on the streets in Kalgoorlie. We're crossing live now to Ash. Hi, Ash. Hi, guys. Oh, Morning, Ash. Ash. Have you got power yet? Is it back on? We've got power. Oh, my oh. God. So when, when did it come oh, back on, yeah. Ash? <laughs> Oh, I mean, I say that, though, obviously, knowing that some people don't have mm. their power back on yet. Yeah, so, so 10,000 yes. homes ten thousand homes have gotten power back. Um, how long have you been yeah. without power? Um, Wednesday. So, power yeah. out Wednesday. Yeah, so but two days. Before, yeah, very hot, steamy Oh, my day. God. Very, gosh. very yeah, hot so and steamy. What, what did you have to do to be able to get around living in a world with no power? Because... And you've got kids, yeah? Yeah, so I've got three kids. <laughs> and it was, I was like, okay, guys, it's all right. We're going old school. And we're very lucky. We have a pool, which a lot of people in Kalgoorlie do. Yeah. So it was like in the pool and then just like lay on the floorboards <laughs> on, your damp, on your damp towel and just kind of sit there. But it was, it was too hot to really do anything anyway. Um, yeah, Alicia had a pool. I mean, like, I yeah. saw, I saw um, yeah. the Oasis pool that, that they had to close. Because they can't run the filters they and can't stuff, run the obviously. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, how, yeah. Are you, how are you going with petrol? How was that? Um, well, we were okay. We had, so we had diesel. We had a little bit of um, unleaded because I'm also a little bit lucky. My husband's an electrician. So he hardwired the generator into the house so that we could have the fridge running. Oh, no. Nice. Um, and a little, we had a pedestal fan, but we could only use that at night. <laughs> when, it was, when it was desperation, <laughs> family of five. Well, you had to have something to look forward to, <laughs> Ash. Like the, the pedestal fan, did, did you have... We just have to make it to six o'clock and we can turn the fan on. <laughs> the pedestal fan, did you have it on rotate so everyone was excited when it went to them? Yeah, when it went past them. <laughs> and everyone went, ah, and made like a little song. <laughs> hey, Ash, how was people going with getting to work or, or fulfilling their day's work? was um not too bad a lot i mean i really do feel for the small businesses though it's it's so hard i mean unless you're the bp in campelda it's like (laughs) who made an absolute bomb yesterday i think there was cars lined up for fuel yeah like a kilometer either side of campelda so that's pretty... There's no yeah, other reason to go to Cambelda, yeah. though. So. Well, well, thank God. I mean, you said your power's back. They said uh, a reported about 10,000 homes in the yes. Goldfields um, area have their power back. But, um, yeah. But That's it, not everyone. It's not everyone. Mm. And no. This is no. like... So, so if you were... Because our, our mum and dad, they rang Kalgoorlie straight away when mm. was, they saw the news yesterday, and then they said, oh, well, the word on the street is yeah. mm. that the power's only going to be out for about 30-something hours. Mm. And I was like, well, what's the word on the street? Mm. their initial their initial text messaging. Yeah. Because um, the power went out a couple of days before that as well. Yeah. Um, and so then it, it, when it came back on, like, people said their lights were still, like, really dim. It was like everything <laughs> yeah. was operating sort of at yes. half power. So you got a little bit yeah. of power. <laughs> yeah, but then that was only a few people. Um, and then, yeah, obviously the big storm through the hills, like, same thing for you guys. I think that sort of moved down and it's taken out. The Cal- I think five five transmitters from the Kalgoorlie yeah, to Meriden yeah. line were all yeah. completely yeah. obliterated. Then the backup generator went down. So <laughs> everyone, they go. Think about and, it, though. And 41 degrees yesterday well, well, and 40 today. This is extreme well, weather. Well, they, they were saying yeah. seven days. So 40 today, 38 um, the next day, then goes 41, 41, 39. So mm. if it was seven days, <gasps> oh, you've got oh, a pool, yeah. we know. And yes. You've got a pool and a generator. The people that don't have a pool and a generator, then you... Oh, you look, where, where, where do, the old people. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. well, well, well even think about things. Where do you go to charge your phone? Yeah. Where do you go to... Yeah. Like, what do you do during the day? It's just nothing. It's just sitting there with no power and being... Hot. The big supermarkets, yeah. how do they operate? Um, I've got to say, Woolworths were great. Coles were closed. Woolies didn't have any of their chilled stuff um, out um, yep. like, for obvious reasons. They're yes. not allowed to. But their fruit and veg and what was, I mean, they had all their staff there, like, directing people in, just come and grab some stuff. Because obviously, you know, this is not our first rodeo. Yeah. Yep. In Kalgoorlie with the power shortages. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone's like, right, we need to go and get our bloody UHT milk, get some bottled water, yeah. all that sort of stuff. So everyone just goes into autopilot. But yeah, the guys at Woolies were great. And the IGA, you know, Connor um, in Somerville in our area yeah. was fantastic as well. They have a generator, so people could go get like meat, milk, things like that. But yeah, as soon as people heard that it was going to be a week, 
it was yeah. it was mayhem. mayhem. Well, you'd make yeah. the decision because yeah. you're going to have to be in a situation where you're rationing. Yeah, you like, you're to. rationing everything, like water, power, all of it. Petrol, all. Yeah. Oh, the minute it happened, we were like, okay. I was like, right, kids, and because I mean, yeah, we have a pool, but the filter's not working. No. So I was like. <laughs> No peeing in the pool, kids. The minute we get in, I know, and we get out, I don't know when I can filter it. No one can jump in the pool. You yes. literally sit in it like a bath. If the water goes out, I have to top it up. Yeah. I can't put any more chlorine into it. Yeah, that's right. So it's like all the this struggle stuff, is like real, new Ash. Mindset changes. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, well, we're glad that your power is back, and we hope you know there are lots in the wheat belt as well who are still so down. Many. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Look, <laughs> stay strong and stay cool, Ash. Thanks for talking to we us can. this morning. We can now. No, thank you so much. Thanks, Bye, Ash. Ash. Thank Amazing. You. Hey, I want to talk about Amazing this. Amazing tale of survival. I want to talk about this um, idea of rationing because uh, that's what me and my mum and dad were talking yes. about last night. It's like, yeah. what, 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 like, how much water do you use? Yes. Like, um, you've got to get your food out of the freezer, and then what? And then yeah. where are we going to power our phones? Have you ever been in a situation like this where you are like days or weeks on mm. end where you've had to make a plan and ration? Because the water would get you, Sean, because you love, you you drink a lot of water. Yeah, yeah, You're a hydration fiend. You know, it actually brings me back. There was a camp we did at the Dockers one time where they give you food, you had food straight up and then yes. you go on this bloody big tour thing and you're in the bush and whatever. And some people just ate all their food in a second. Yeah. And then you've and got then nothing. And they didn't tell you. How long you're going for. Yeah. <laughs> Far oh, out. I love yeah. that. All right, 1324, tell me what to talk about. When you've been forced to ration whatever it is, food, mm. power, water, someone's going to get something awesome, a Rendezvous Perth Scarborough overnight stay. Check out the Rendezvous Film Club with exclu- exclusive club lounge access. Head to rendezvousperthscarborough.com.au. All right, what have you had to ration and how long for? Kurt's in Byford. Hi, Kurt. Morning, guys. How are you going? Hey, Hello, buddy. Kurt. When did you have to ration, mate? What was the story? Yeah, okay. Look, so I'm uh, I'm originally from South Africa and most of my family are in South Africa and uh, they have something called load shedding, which is quite common in South Africa due to uh, electricity and power having to go out nearly three to four hours of every day. And it's something that they go through on a regular basis. Now, I went to, uh, to visit family for, for about six weeks last year and um, I witnessed this firsthand, but it wasn't just three to four hours. It actually went out for about four or five days and it was oh, incredible. Uh, whoa. What had happened was not only did the power, did they lose power, but there was no fuel. People were, were WhatsApping or messaging one another to let one another know where the nearest shop was or where they could actually get food, and, uh, like bread, your, your basic necessities, necessities like milk and and, and, uh, and and bread and those kind of things. And it was crazy. Most of the time, these people were sort of trapped in their homes either because they didn't have fuel. Um, and then the power did come back on after four or five days and it lasted for about three or four hours and then went out for another oh. two or three days. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. So just enough time to, like, charge your phone <laughs> for a second. Yeah, and look, it's incredible how these guys have to do this. And, and for me, it was such a shock because, as I said, all my family are there and I hear about load shedding happening. Yes. You know, they say, oh, yeah, we've got load shedding. That's why we couldn't get the message across today. It's been out for three or four hours. But to actually be there in person and wow. see the yeah. power out for up to five days and then them having to struggle. We had family members bring jerry cans of fuel over yeah. just so they could get from one place and get to the shop so they could get the stuff that they needed. It was incredible. And we would really not cope with that because no. the way we behaved in quarantine when everybody oh started God. panicking, panic buying, buying milk. When the, and the shops yeah. weren't even closing. Yeah. Toilet the paper. The shops weren't closed. I was speaking to mum about it last night. Mum goes, oh, I don't know what. People can just go back to what we did in the old days. I said, mum, you remember the old days. Anyone younger than you don't. <laughs> like, I said, you could go out of Yeah, because mum goes, oh, we, we went days without power. I said, yeah, but like a lot of people have never experienced a world without no. power. Yeah. And, and a lot it's more not, things rely fault. on it now you, you, you than then. You were born during the Depression. Yes. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Kurt. Let's go to Max in Maylands. Hi, Max. Hi, good morning. Hi, Hi Max. All right, Maxie. What, when did you have to ration? Uh, mine was a few years ago in Boston, Massachusetts. So I'm originally from the U.S. And so our rationing was due to power outages from winter storms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just a, a bit different where power would go out for a few days. You, you had a Jenny, so you'd uh, ration fuel with your neighbours. So depending on who had more fuel in their generators. But you didn't really have to worry about your fridge because you could put stuff out in the stairs. Outside, oh, yeah. Uh, so it's the know, opposite problem. But you're, you're freezing to death, right? You need to heat the house, Yeah. yeah? Exactly, and then you worry about your pipes bursting because of freezing, so you're trying just to keep oh. the house warm enough not for the pipes to freeze. Yeah, but how? Uh, just close your legs. Then, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Everyone holds a pipe, you know. 
<laughs> no, pretty much you uh, you'd wrap them in anything you have, so like towels, blankets. Oh, house, I tried to them warm. Exposed, yep, exposed piping, and then <laughs> like you'd use the generator to do like a few hours of heat, like electric heat for yep. the house, and then turn it off. So you're uh, so you're wrap, you're wrapping a scarf around the S bend. Yes. Yeah. Like, so the pals out, the first thing you could do is go and wrap up all the pipes. Oh, oh my put God. A pipe put, a, put, a, put a puffer jacket on the laundry. <laughs> taps. <laughs> While oh, you're shivering. Max, you must be pretty happy to live here where we don't have that issue, right? I, I am. It's much nicer to be in the warmth than the cold. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so Play much. I think here. I would rather... See, I would rather... With power off for days, I'd rather be in the cold than the warmth because I could put jackets on, but I cannot. I could not even to, to have no uh, relief from forty degree days. That that would do my head in. Mm, I what think you say that, but that's without yeah. ex- without experiencing the extreme cold. cold. I'm, no, I don't but I'm think... saying with access to many jackets. <laughs> Mm. I don't one, know that there's yeah, enough okay, jackets. So you can't shed anything. There'd be you can put things jackets. on, but you can't yes, shed anything. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can put things I'm on to keep warm. You yeah. can run around and open a window and be nude. <laughs> mm, I don't think it's good for me. I don't think it's good for anyone. I don't think it's good for the window. Let's go I don't think w- the wind will like it. Warren, hello. <laughs> Warren? Oh, guys, how are you going? Hello, Warren. Warren. Okay, talk to us about when you had to ration. Uh, so I'm, I'm originally from Melbourne and... Um, in the late 90s, um, an unfortunate circumstance, but there was an explosion at the gas power plant. Yeah. Uh, or the gas plant, I should say. And uh, we went for two weeks in the middle of winter oh. uh, without gas. So having to heat water in kettles, <laughs> have a bath or a shower, yeah. cooking on the stovetop, the heater in the house. So, yeah, we had uh, some... I know people have it a lot worse, but <laughs> in the middle of winter in Melbourne, it was quite... Quite an impact. That's yeah. the old school stuff your yeah. mum's talking no, about. You got the, the fires going, stuff. but no hot water. Yeah, yeah. When, when we were in Big yeah, Brother, no, yeah, no hot water. When we were in the Big Brother house, we had to pay for things like hot water. Um, mm. So, it, and that was the, your food and your beer mm. money. So we just decided to mm. never have hot water and just have beer. Yeah, it's lucky it wasn't a Melbourne winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was in Queensland. Yeah, but like, um, we we were doing the heating up the water and yeah. all that sort of stuff. And like, you it, don't, you don't, even if you do it daily for two weeks, it annoys the crap mm. out of you every time you do it. Nathan, there's a school over in Melbourne where my my old son Lachlan's uh, mate went to, Tom, and that's, they, I don't know if it's Geelong Grammar or one of those. Geelong Grammar has Timber Top. No, T-top, Timber Top. Timber Top, it's Geelong Grammar, but and, yes. they, and they send you to a place like this where to have a shower, you have to start a fire and heat up the, the teach, boiler. To teach the rich kids about the realities of yeah. life. <laughs> you know so who went there? You know who went there? <laughs> Prince Charles, back in the day. Prince Charles. Prince Charles. Yeah, but that's back that, in the day, mate. This is it. not, you know, 2024. <laughs> and and they put them on a bus and take them just to a slightly outer suburb and say, yes. this is how the people out here live. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Look at that, no trees. <laughs> <laughs> no trees. Amazing. Thanks, Warren. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, Sean. Everybody's in the running, of course, to go and see Taylor Swift in Tokyo because they got on air with us. Well done. First person we spoke to was Kurt. He's going to walk away with this over in South Africa, oh, how they do next it. next level. Yeah, uh, Rondé Vu per Scarborough overnight stay. Check out Rendezvous Film Club with exclusive club lounge access. Head to rendezvousperthscarborough.com.au. This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Ross has just come into the studio, which is normally his domain. Yeah, yeah. So but we're, now, yeah. because of the renovations, we are going to be broadcasting from Studio 2 for the foreseeable mm. future. Welcome. Our studio has been gutted. Ross's studio. So, Ross, Welcome. Yeah. we are on your turf. I know. It's nice to have you. I did listen at 6am. You said the studio smelled like Ross, which I was <laughs> worried what that actually smells yeah, like. Is, is it good, good or bad? bad? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. No, I told we're not going to tell you to your face. It smells <laughs> like biceps and lithium. It's weird. <laughs> uh, it's thank nice. you for having us. It's tight. This is tight. Titan here, it's like cozy, this, isn't it? it's significantly smaller than the the big studio, your one. Yeah, yeah. But um, how are you finding it? Because oh, we don't like it. Don't at all. like it. Yeah, it's what very small. It? It's very. We we do have a nicer a nicer layout. There's nowhere to play darts. Yeah, so yes. that's bad. It's darker. What's the energy feel like though in here? It feels um, the opposite to in there. So it's actually quite positive. <laughs> <laughs> That'll change. Yeah, You'll change yeah, it. That'll change very quickly. <laughs> We're going to ruin the week. it for you for sure. And it's Friday, I know. so it is the end of the week. Nathan, Nat, and Sean podcast. Natalie's just been checking uh, the outages in Kalgoorlie to yes. see what suburbs are getting their power yes. back on. So Lamington? Where's that at? Lamington is still out. Lamington. And South Kalgoorlie yep. still yep. out. Boulder still yep. out. And Amy, our producer, that's the first time you realise that the suburb that I lived in 
was called Lamington. Yeah, it's cute. Isn't it, it sweet? It's it not a suburb, sweet. though, is it? It's, it's you just can't see it's a suburb. No. I was growing up in Lamington. I never realised how stupid that was, <laughs> that I lived in a suburb yeah, called, called Lamington. Lamington. Yeah. Natalie used to see it. Well, yeah, so when uh, I was a kid growing up in Esperance, mm-hmm. obviously, once we started getting GWN, we would get the Kalgoorlie ads, and there was an ad for Lamington Cleaners. And, and they were a like, great business. They'd come over <laughs> and they'd get all the coconut, coconut off, off of your chocolate sponge. <laughs> 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 With a mini vacuum. I just used to think it was hilarious. We had a really, we had a filthy Lamington problem in Calgary <laughs> that really? required a business. Well, having been to Lamington now, Nathan, because we went there when yes. we took listeners, yeah, um, yeah I can see that. Yeah. We needed a lot yeah, of cleaning. Yeah, we need some cleaning in Lamington. Um, I mean, you might want to go on a holiday to Lamington. Or oh, maybe the other Calgary um, uh, suburb, Custard Horn. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Your pick of great Aussie trips on the What If app. Book accommodation, flights and more. What If? It's Aussie for travel. We got 500 bucks cash thanks to our mates at What If. Up for grabs. Um, you just have to tell us today's Australian tourist destination that we're thinking of. We'd love it to be Robin, who's the first cab off the rank today. G'day, Robin. Good morning. Hi, Hi Robin. Robin. It's tough to be first, but it's not impossible, Robin. Yeah. All we're going to require from you is a question that gets a yes or no answer. If you get a yes, you can have a stab in the dark and say what it is. Or you can ask another question. If you get a no, we're going to move on to someone else. Go for it, Robin. Okay. Is the destination outside of WA? Yes. Yes. Keep going, Robin. Oh, it's Harry. Harry. Harry Harry doesn't know his geo. One job. It's all backwards here, I told you. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Robin, ask another question. Is the destination in the lower half of Australia? Yes. Yes. Great question. (laughs) Keep going. Is the destination in Tasmania? It is not. No. It is not. We recently visited Tassie. We're going to go to Stacey in Allenbrook. Hi, Stace. Hello, how are you? Good right, so we know it's in the lower half of Australia, yeah, not in WA no. and not in Tasmania. All right, what's your question? Is it on the coast? No. no. Thank okay. you, Stacey. Thank you so much. Hey, Karen. Hi there, guys. How are you going? Yeah, great, Karen. Karen. Good, honey. Okay, what's your question? <laughs> their, que- their questions were great, by the way. Mine will be absolutely bloody useless. Is it in Melbourne? It is not. No, it was oh, useless, Melbourne. wasn't it, Karen? Yes, useless. Karen. That was as useless, useless as promised. Marie, hello. <laughs> hey, how you going? Hey, All right, Marie. Marie. What is your question? Uh, is it in South Australia? It yes, is in South it is Australia. South Australia. Mm. Marie knows mm. it. Mm. Uh, is it the Great Australian Bight? No. It is it's not. It's not because that would uh, be on, the, on coast. the coast. Yes, it's not on uh, the coast. Hello, Barbara. <laughs> Hi, how are you going? Good, Babs. Good All right. Babs. Now, we know it's in South Australia. We know it's not on the coast. Mm. What oh, is your golly. question? Oh, um, golly. Is it to do with vineyards? It is not. No. no. That's a good not. question, okay. though. Good question. It, it rules out a fair whack of yeah, South Australia. Right. I have to say, the questions today are on point. I know. Okay. Smart well people. Done. Let's go to Midland. The smartest person in Midland is Cathy. Famously. Hello, Cath. Hello. Oh, gosh, please don't give me that uh, nice. title. Well, we, we didn't. Midland did. So. Yeah, it's, right. <laughs> it's deserved. <laughs> What's your uh, question, Kat? Uh, oh, gosh, I have no idea because I'm not very good with uh, South Australia, but it's not um, anything to do with wineries, I'm assuming. Um, <laughs> is uh, something to do with the coast. Um, I'm wondering why you rang. Leave her alone. She's no, no, processing. Oh. Come on. Yep, yep. Me too. I'm trying to think. I don't know. Um, does it have anything to do? I've got a lunch date, Kath. <laughs> Sean, don't interrupt what? her. With what, Kath? Does it have anything to do? <laughs> I'm trying to get to the Wildcats at 6 30. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> let, 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 just, let Kathy be. Hurry up, Kath. Come on. I don't know. Does it have anything to do with the National Park? <laughs> no. Uh, Great question. Harry's got to go. He's going to straight Harry's and open for God's Harry's sake. Harry's got to play the catch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lynn's in Mount Hawthorne. Hi, Lynn. Hi, guys. Okay, Hi, Lynn. Lynn. So we know Hi, it's in Lynn. South Australia. It's not on the coast. It's got nothing to do with wine and it's not a national park. What is your question? Okay, is there water there? 
No. 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 I mean, not you know, there'll, like there'll, be, there'll be a cup of water not, there. It's not famous for yeah, a bottle of water. There'll be a bottle of Mount Franklin no. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Danielle. Danielle. Oh, Danielle, no, Danielle, you've played this game every day this week. Is Are you going to take out the win today? Look, I'm, I'm crap at it, so probably not. Okay. <laughs> what is your question? Uh, can you play games here? Can you play games here? What do you mean? I mean, you could play Scrabble. Scrabble. No, you can play games anywhere. <laughs> so, I mean, you have to say yes, you can well, play yes, games you can there. Play games Is there. it yes. famous for playing games there? No. No, but, no but next yeah. question. Can well, you wear clothes there? <laughs> I'm sure yes, you can. <laughs> Danielle? Just helping out. Keep going. So you're saying yes, are you? Oh, okay. Um, uh, is there greenery there? I'm going to say oh, no. no. I'm sure really. there is, but, but no. no. Yes, as a general it's not. rule. And I wouldn't use that first question that we yeah. kind of went with. No, that's with not a clue. Yeah. No. No, no, guys, um, everyone in Maylands is so smart. What everyone about that chooses a, and everyone who's a nat is super smart? So Put this them is, together. This is going to be amazing. Crikey. Hello, hello, Nat from Maylands. Hello. Hi. Um, mm. Yeah. Dab in the dark. Is it Cooper Petey? <laughs> is it Cooper Petey? What did I tell you about the people in Maylands? And people you said they're smart. Yes, it is, Cooper Petey. You've done it. You've scored five hundred dollars cash thanks to our buddies at What If. Well played. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. Mm, Maybe I'll take it away. Maybe she'll buy some opals. Mm. Do girls like opals? Have you got an opal? No, I don't have an opal. Nat, do you have an opal? Some people say opals are bad luck. Obviously, not the people in Cooper Petey. Nat from Maylands, do you have an opal? I actually do. I've got a, an opal ring, but maybe some earrings will be Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, matching. Mm. Matchy, matchy. Do you wear your opal ring often? I wear it every That's day. That's a bit of a personal question. I'm not wearing it now. Talk oh, to me about... What are you wearing to, that to, Back in the day, every every young lady wanting to, you know, face the day and, and be a respectable part of the community had a string of pearls. Do you have a string of pearls, Nat? No. No, no, I've got pearl I earrings, but I don't pearl. have a string. You've got pearl earrings. You don't yeah, have a pearl gift. necklace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. I don't have a string of pearls. <laughs> you want me to help that? No, no. Oh. Where, where is this going? Oh, I, I don't know. know. I know. If Megan has a pearl necklace, I think, <laughs> I think we know where it's going. No, no. I don't. Oh, I'm oh, meaning oh, jewellery. Don't, don't you so, start mate, playing oh. it now. A pearl tiara then. Yeah, well, we're, yeah. We're, we're everyone's got a pearl tiara. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. Loving on me, Sean. <laughs> oh, Jack Harlow plays for the Bulldogs, say, doesn't he? <laughs> whip your loving on me. Whip or put? I'm staying out of this part. <laughs> no, it's just. I can only get in for trouble. The best. I've never heard that <laughs> sentence. Whip your loving on me. You know, never heard it. Never heard I'll it. act it out Didn't for you later. Thing. Here we go. Like okay, 28. Okay. It is. It's whip. It's whip Whipsy? your. It's, it's obviously whip your loving on me. Whip your loving on me. Yeah, whip, whip your, your loving on me. So what? Is that like just give me some loving quickly? Mm. Like, well, they're the words. Mm. Pre showing you, you the words. Whip your loving on me, baby. Whip your loving on me, <laughs> I don't think. baby. I'm vanilla, baby. I'll choke you, but I ain't no killer, baby. What? Is She's this... 28 telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like a skiller, baby. And then the thing about your boy is I don't like no whips and chains, and you can't tie me down. But when you can, whip your loving on me, baby. Spoken whip word. your loving on me. <laughs> Morris. Young J A C K, Akariko, like suave, young. In it's hard to speak in that argue this is a better version, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually. More of Jack, thanks. Yeah. You're going to whip your loving on Megan this morning? This, this morning? This, this, this weekend? I'll give it a go. Because that's all the young kids are doing. <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean. Podcast. Harry uh, Fitzgerald, who sure. does all the panelling for oh. us, uh, was so excited. To, uh, Harry, where are you going today? Uh, Melbourne, and I've been hustling to just and make sure I can get out of here really time, early. What time's the flight? 20 past 11. And it's okay. 3 past 9 now. So and what just happened? Yeah. just got a message from Virgin and I said, we apologise for changes to the flight. Well, there's been a big change. It's been cancelled. That oh, is, that, that's, that's a, a significant change. change. That's happened a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. So now what? Did they offer got... an alternative? No, nothing yet. <laughs> so wait, though, you have to be there for tonight? Like, is something on tonight or is it tomorrow? Uh, tonight would be nice. 
make dinner. He's supposed to be there to see uh, help Alex Diminard with the change of ends. Yeah, yeah. Australian Open gear. So yeah, for tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> well, I'll um. Can we wrap the show off? <laughs> 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 no, no, I didn't get going. It was right now. Yeah. We're just informing anyone that was on that flight. Um, now that the flight's yeah. cancelled, so we're giving everyone now a little bit of a head start mm. against yes. you to get on another flight onto the course. So as we're speaking right now, <laughs> the other flights are no, all I filling think, up. Fair, right. If if Great. you were on that flight, just hold yeah. off, and so you can all have a fair go in five minutes' time. Yeah. Yeah. Vo six eight four. Oh, cancelled. <laughs> Whatever flight da Harry does do today, um, uh, he's very tall, a tall drink of water. If you mm, see mm, him, he's mm. going to attempt to get an upgrade to an emergency exit row or something. Mm. Oh, so just oh. say hello to everyone now. It would just be hello, grateful everyone. to get on a plane yeah. Yeah. Hi, at this point. Everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Harry and I've got long legs and I'll, yep. I will be in the emergency exit row. But Pref- I the good will news is, if you window. don't get there, Fringe oh, yeah, World's a... kicked off. So there's heaps to do in Perth. You know what? It's my mate's birthday tomorrow. I'll make yeah. the pool party. Yeah, oh. you go yeah. scorchers. There's a lot going on here. We are are kicking off Fringe Friday Ooh. right now, everybody. If you want to score $150 to spend on Fringe World Perth shows, give us a call on 13 24 10 right now. Awesome, Nath. We're going to give it to a caller number 10. Mm. You can grab your tickets to he- uh, for heaps of the shows at fringeworld.com.au. All right. We are... Out of here. Um, next week on the show, comedians Joel Creasy and Claire Hooper. Yeah. They're like oh, yeah. bo- both Perth kids that have done all right for themselves, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, we're still the place to get Taylor Swift tickets. Yeah, of we are. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Oh, and a short week. Yeah, short oh, week. Next Friday's public holiday. Ross, how look at Ross <laughs> in the news booth. I'm in Ellie's news booth. Ross, how embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> it's different in here. You're sitting down, it's much shorter yeah. and smaller. Uh, you should be in there just for a solo show, though. Yeah. Uh, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a bed sit. It is, yeah. <laughs> that, that sad man yeah. that just got divorced ago. That's right. <laughs> bed sit. It's like you can, you can sit on your bed and reach your seat. That's exactly Brilliant. what it is. Yeah, you're in there from now on. Yeah, no, no, no. It's got a good vibe as well. No, it's got a bit of a different vibe as well. Like you guys said earlier, it's the opposite of the vibe in that yes. studio, which was positive. Yeah, because that's Ellie positive. vibes in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Ellie vibe, that's more resent. Yes. <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.